Ah, hello, fellow baseball fans. Well, as promised, I was going to do a video talking about the first half of the season. And what a first half it was, especially for the team with this logo. Now, I just want to say as a Yankees fan, I didn't expect any of this. I'm really serious. I was looking forward to the season, and that was and, and that anticipated the anticipation increased because there was a lockout. But my expectations for the Yankees were not high. I was still kind of down about how last year ended. It was not good for me, not only as a Yankee fan, but just as an overall person. And um, it, 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 it had me rethinking how I should conduct myself as a Yankee fan. So uh, I decided, I, w I decided, thinking back, especially based on how last year ended, I was not going to raise expectations. I didn't even have us winning the division. I'm serious. Because I thought, well, Tampa Bay is pretty good. They won, they won 100 games last year. I thought they'll probably take the East again. Uh, and we'll probably be a wild card, hopefully. And especially since they, uh, they, they traded Sanchez, Gio, and Scheller. I liked those two. I thought they were great. I was pissed about that trade. Fast forward a few months. The Yankees have the best record in baseball. And I'm I'm Telling the God's honest truth, I did not see this coming. I really did not see this coming. But the Yankees at the first half have the best record in baseball. Um, and the lead in the American East is immense. It's ridiculously immense. I mean, uh, and, 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 it's, and we are earning that record. We're not only, we're leading the league in home runs. I think we lead the league in runs. We're not blowing runs and scoring position uh, 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 opportunities like we have in the last like two, three seasons. We are getting those runs in. And, and, and by the by the bunches, the Yankees have scored 10 or more runs in 16 games this season. That leads the league. I think no other, no other team is more than 10. I mean, it is insane how this team is doing. So it has me, number one, just wanting October to get here. Number two, feeling that I'll be celebrating again this calendar year, just like I did with the Avalanche. Um, and the Yankees are 64-28. and 28. The lead in the division, it's all on this app, uh, the lead in the division is 13 games. That's the largest lead in baseball. Um, but yeah, the, the, the AL East is pretty much over, but pretty much the rest of the division has a shot at the postseason, even Baltimore. That's right, the Orioles are 500 at the break, 46-46. It is a huge improvement from their last few seasons where they lost like 100, 100 a year. And boy, do they deserve something good for them. I mean, um, they, 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 uh, Chris Davis is gone, so I don't think, well, I think they kind of have a Bobby Bonilla situation with Chris Davis, but he's not on the team anymore. But, listen, they're 46-46. and 46. Even if they even if they go 81 81 and miss the postseason again, it's a win. But they could make the postseason. Where are the wild card says okay, so the wild card say they really need to fix this because they only have the line below two teams. It's a three. It's three wild cards now. That's that's the that's that's the adjustment they made. Um, that's the adjustment they made during the lockout discussions. It's three wild cards per league now, and no game, no tiebreaker games at all. Those are done. But anyway, it's uh, at the moment in the wild cards, the wild card race, the wild cards would go to the Rays, the Mariners, and the Blue Jays if the season ended today. Uh, Boston's two games out. The Cleveland Guardians, in their first season with their new name, are two and a half games out, and the um, Orioles and White Sox are both three and a half games out. The White Sox are 46 and 46 as well, but that's a disappointment for them because they won the AL Central last year. But yes, yeah, Seattle. Let's talk about them. Seattle. Seattle ended the first half. Winning 14 in a row. That's right. They haven't lost a game in over two weeks. 14 games, is at least more than two weeks, about two and a half weeks worth of uh, baseball, uh, considering off days. But yeah, but yeah, Seattle is on a roll. They could make the they could make the play postseason. I really hope they do. They have the the Mariners have the longest current postseason drought in professional sports. They have not made it since 2001. That's 21 years. One team ended a 21-year drought or something. Could the Mariners beat, do, it, do it to theirs? We'll find out. But yeah, um, 
but yeah, it, it still kind of looks like we could see three wild cards from the east. But Boss needs to get things going. Boss is not beat. Boss can't beat division opponents, and you need to beat division opponents. Uh, but that's the American League. Uh, the American League is pretty much. Uh, it's a foregone conclusion that the Yankees and Astros are going to be the two teams atop the league, and I think that's going to be the ALCS. I myself want it, especially since we could get home field, home park advantage in that series, and we're going to need that. So, um, so that's the American League in the Senior Circuit, aka the National League. It's a little bit more interesting. Uh, the Mets are in first place, but that lead is dwindling. That lead is dwindling. They had a big lead uh, about a month or so ago, but they kind of fell off a little bit while the Braves are getting red hot. So the Braves, the defending champs, are two and a half games out in the East. Uh, the Brewers are in first place by half game in the NL Central. It's a two-team race. It's them and the Cardinals because the other three, yeah. Pittsburgh's in third place. Amazing. Um, and the Dodgers are up by 10 games in the West. Uh, that division's pretty much theirs. I can't see them blowing that lead. Uh, San Diego, San Diego's right behind, and San Francisco's uh, behind them, too. Um, as for the National League wild card, the spots would go to Atlanta, San Diego, and Philly if the season ended right now. Yeah, Philly, yeah, Philly finally did something this year that they should have done two years ago. They fired Joe Girardi. And they keep proving me right. I've said, for, I've said, ever since he took that job, I said, he's the problem. He's a lousy manager. I'm a Yankees fan. I'm over experience. This guy completely fucked up when he was our, when he was our manager. But, but Yankee fans tell me, well, yeah, we won with him. We won in spite of him. We won in spite of him. We had a whole bunch of Hall of Famers on that 2019. I could have managed that team. But uh, the Girardi is awful. He has this great lineup, including Bryce Harper, who's the best hitter in baseball. But no postseason. How do you miss the postseason that many years? Uh, how do you miss the postseason nearly every year of your existence, every every year as manager with that lineup? How? But um, Rob Thompson's the interim manager, and Philly's moving up the ladder. Yeah, Philly. Uh, well, it, it's a complicated thing. They're actually tied with the Cardinals, but it's but they're. They're having them by a percentage point, so Philly would get in. Because remember, again, there's no tiebreaker games anymore. All tiebreakers, especially for any any tiebreakers for wild card spots or division titles, are decided internally, usually head to head. And um, but yeah, that's that was that's part of format change. There's no tiebreaker games anymore. Um, the, the Giants are a half game out of a spot. Um, Miami's five and a half out. I have to mention that because who knows? Miami might sneak back in. Um, but yeah, um, it's been a, an amazing season so far. First half. First half's been crazy. And we'll see what the second half brings us. But um, it's going to be amazing. And uh, I won't be back here to talk baseball. Until the month of September comes, which isn't too, which isn't too far away, we're all, we're pretty much at the home stretch in the month of July. Um, so, yeah, September is that pivotal month. And remember, uh, and I'll and I'll explain the format. So again, like I said, it's three wild cards now. Uh, three division winners, three wild cards. The uh, top two teams in each league have buys straight to the division series. The other four teams seeded three through six. We'll have to play in the wild card series. Now we did. Now this is the first official year of the wild card series, but we did see this before two years ago during the COVID nineteen affected uh, twenty twenty season, which was sixty games long and localized. Uh, that year saw sixteen teams qualify for the postseason. An interesting format. Of course, the division winners were seeded one through three. The second place teams were seeded four through six, based on record. And there will and and the, and the, tr the true wild cards were the seven and eight seats. Uh, of course, round one was the wild card series. The wild card series is two out of three, and um, home and home field advantage goes to the team with the better seed. And all three games are played in that on that site. Like uh, for example, well, let's see. I think one of the I think one of the matchups. Let me go National League here. I think one of the matchups in the Nash League, if the season ended at this point, it would be Milwaukee and Philly. Milwaukee's the lone division. Milwaukee would enter as the NF Central winner, and they would have home field advantage in that wild card series. All three games would be in Milwaukee. So, 
yeah. I said it's a best of three series. The winners advance to the division series, and there's no re-ranking. There's no reseeding. Uh, the number one, the winner of the, I think the winner of the four five series. I think I have that right. The winner of the four five series would face the number one seed. The winner of the three six series would face the number two seed. There is no reseeding. So uh, that's how that's how the pro, that's how the playoffs are going to go starting this year. Uh, it's going to be interesting. So um, again, uh, I'll be back. And I'll be back on YouTube in about a week or so to discuss Canadian football because the CFL season is almost a third of the way through, um, and uh, I, I won't I won't be talking baseball on YouTube until the month of September hits because that's the pivotal month. So that's my recap of the first half of this amazingly crazy season. Uh, if you like this video, click the like button. Click subscribe if you want more of my stories on vocal. Uh, recap of the first half by league will be in the description below one for the American League one for the National League but they'll be in the description below check them out when you can and I'll be back on YouTube uh, in about a week about less than a week to talk about the CFL season so far and regarding baseball I'll talk about that on YouTube in September so stay tuned